and with the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in the fire of your love. Lord, send forth your Spirit, and things shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful people, and that same Spirit help us to relish what is right, and rejoice in this consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, um, so let me introduce myself. My name is David Gutierrez. I am originally from California. And um, yeah, born in LA with the public school. And then after being in public school, I joined the Minor Seminary of the Legionaries of Christ. It was a really nice experience. I can tell you the truth. And there I had my true encounter with Christ. So, uh, what followed after that was I continued the seminary for another 14 years. I am no, I am no longer a legionary. I was a legionary. So I had, I lived consecrated life, uh, for that long, but technically I had vows for eight years. I was a novice for two years and I was a minor seminary for another four. So why is, am I bringing this up, uh, mentioning this? It's super key to see how beautiful, like, honestly, it seems like time just flies when you encounter the Lord because I would have not stayed that long in the seminary if I really didn't encounter the Lord, if he wasn't really a person, if he did not uh, let me have that encounter that I did with him. So uh, what happened? Um... I was just visiting the seminary, the minor seminary. My brother wanted to become a priest. Now he doesn't, blah, blah, But there, when I was in the chapel, there was this meditation going on, led by one of the priests. And I just remember having this experience of Christ as a person who loves me, cares for me, and is there for me. And like he's completely awesome like he he i felt him like a person and i just felt so much love and i felt his presence that i did not want to just simply not do anything for him so that's when i felt the calling and sure god has his ways i felt the calling and i followed it for 14 years and then i discerned it wasn't for me because the funny thing is the way the lord works sometimes he tells you yes and then later he tells you no and then things start happening and yeah, you just follow. You're led by the spirit. It seems kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, it's it's very crazy. So just following the Holy Spirit and being a missionary as a legionary, I've lived in Northern California by Lake Tahoe. I lived on the East Coast in Connecticut where they have, where they have the novitiate seminary. And then after that, I went over to um, Monterey, Mexico, where they had, I continued my novitiate there for eight months, and then came back to Cheshire, studied two more years of college, uh, and finished my novitiate, did my first vows as well, before I started those two years of college. And then following that, given the circumstances, I was asked to go to Rome, because our missionary order, the missionary order that I belonged to at the time, which was the legionaries, uh, they had their mother house there or their mother um, university for teaching philosophy because there was nowhere else where the seminaries could could receive philosophy. So that was the only place to go. So that was the only place they I could study philosophy. So I originally got a bachelor's degree uh, for three years. And then I was asked to get a... Um, continue to get my master's for another two years and then it was an interesting experience and then as well after that I had one year of internship and then like from before that like before the year I started having a few doubts whether or not to continue because I just felt specific things that I knew um God was asking me to like I wasn't doing anything wrong but I just felt God was asking me to do something else so um, why am I, why is this important? Because like when you live by the Holy Spirit, 
you could do things you could never imagine. Like, honestly, growing up, I never thought I would do all that. But what's most important is the fact that you have Jesus by your side. And even though you, I wasn't, you might be in different difficult situations, you can handle all things. So, um, so with me, when I was in formation, I realized that one of the most essential things that you have to do in your life is two, two things. Um, and if you go out of these two things, you start getting your, you start getting complicated and you just start making your life a mess. Uh, the two things is actually discerning God's will with like really discerning, asking him what he wants of you, detachment, like of sin. And then you could hear his voice and fasting, not only like not eating, but like fasting, controlling yourself in a lot of different areas. Um, like being a virtuous life that's a way of fasting from falling into concupiscence or living fortitude um so when you do that like you actually discern you're able to like be more perceptive of what god is asking of you and then after that you after you know what the lord is asking of you you just do it with all your heart and don't let go sure doesn't mean like go full throttle and like St. Ignatius necessarily, St. Ignatius had his own vocation. We don't necessarily have that vocation, but sometimes God asks you to do things, not like going out and going crazy and going to India and then chi dying in China. Sometimes God is asking us just to work where we are at. Um, like for example, Upu's day, the ordinary life, that's, that's their cares and incorporating Christ in that. But it like God has different modalities in which you can live your vocation. Doesn't mean necessarily you need to go out and always talk about Jesus because as well that could turn some people off. And and you could, what you could do instead is live an exemplary lifestyle, which is attractive. And people start asking themselves like, why is this person happy? Like he has something I don't have. And they start investigating and they find out you're actually a Catholic and you have a deep relationship with Christ and they want that. Kind of like the first Christians. They weren't exactly preaching the gospel in Rome. Like they would have gotten crucified right on the spot, but they got caught like practicing little things in here and there. And when they were in the arenas getting murdered or killed, people saw how much they loved each other and how much they prayed and how courageous they were before temptation and that's how they converted people it wasn't necessarily them like talking about jesus the whole time like it's also important to preach by just your lifestyle but how do you do that um so it requires a lot of like a lot of discernment so kind of going back to the first part with discernment it's super key to make sure you have a solid prayer life so I don't know what exactly your charism is, but I'm sure it's blessed by God and you're following it. But um, give me hold, give me hold on a second. Sorry. So um, when it comes to discernment, you have to do certain things. Uh, like saying, Ignatius is very prudent when he talks about this stuff. I'm I'm not a Jesuit, but I love the Jesuit spirituality. But, um, like, for example, like what I was talking about before, detachment from sin is super key if you want to, first of all, go down the right path. And also taking time with Jesus, like, day to day, boom, boom, boom. Because like, if you don't do that, like, Jesus is not a genie in a bottle that when you need him, you, like, rub the, rub the lamp, the lantern or the lamp, and he pops out. No. Jesus is a real person, and as a real person, just like any other friend, any other person that could possibly exist on the face of the earth, you could only call him a friend if you actually have, uh, spend time with him. If you actually stop what you're doing and pay attention to him, like, ask him, like, when you're reading God's word, ask him, like, what do you, what was in your heart, Jesus, when you were doing this? What was in your heart when, when you were saying these words to these prophets? What was in your heart when all these things happen. Like, what were you trying to do, really? 
make them real for you because if you don't do that, you're just like a pushover. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, this is kind of going back to like a little bit in history. Uh, when Pope Benedict XVI became Pope, he wasn't necessarily somebody that a lot of people like a lot of people did admire him for like his intelligence but he kind of they seem he seemed like a cold person but he's not he was actually a very very um sensitive person it's not like um the movie the two popes unfortunately i don't like a lot of people like those movies but no he's not like that if you read his writings if you see um sometimes the conversations that he has that were recorded you see that he's not a person that's cold. He's actually a very, very intelligent person, and he knows how to interact with people. But when he talks in public, he's used to pre- he's used to talking as a professor. So he could he was a theology professor. So sometimes it seems like he's very like rigid and stuff, but he's not. And one of his first um, audiences that he kind of like said something like random, like off, like off script, was saying like Christianity. Is not a set of concepts. It's not a doctrine. It's not an idea. It's not a way. Like it's not a way of life. It's not like something that's abstract out there. No, Christianity is a person. Christianity is a person. Why is that? And um, like I think he goes further on and explains, but I'm kind of like putting that in parentheses. But it's important to have Christianity as a person because you can only give yourself completely to somebody if they're a person like people don't die for ideas but they die out of love for other people um victor frank i don't know if you ever heard of him he's a famous psychologist in world war ii where he was entrapped in a um in a camp with their concentration camp and he saw like the bitter reality of how some people they just fell apart because they simply did not they did not like have motivation like and that motivation when you would ask them like he would ask those people hey what was your motivation they would say oh i need to make it back to a loved one oh i need to make it over to seeing my daughter again so like people survive the worst of circumstances because they had an encounter with a person and it's the same way with us like as christians i don't know again what your charism is it's important to have a it's important to have this encounter important to like Allow yourself to see God as a person. Okay. Um, this is going to get a little more philosophical. Sorry. It's just, but it's important also to see God has feelings. Um, like Jesus, the beautiful example, when Lazarus dies, Jesus wept. Imagine this, God, all powerful, almighty, like all eternal crying for a friend. Jesus has feelings. And it's important to realize, like, sorry if I keep on saying that, it's important to realize because it's it's so beautiful to know that God was a person and he took on all those difficulties of what we normally encounter and he made it his his own. He made it his own. So, um, <laughs> like, God took all that upon himself. Like, he also had temptations against different sins. Like, he had, he had struggles with his sexuality. He had those temptations as well. Sure, he was sinless, but he also experienced the same things that you experienced. Like, he was attracted to women. Yes. He also had to know how to interact with people. He had to learn how to interact with people. He had to, he formed part of a culture. He, like, he, like, had religious views. He was, he grew up Jewish. Like, God became a person and he took all that upon himself. Like, Jesus also had, like, when he was a carpenter, I'm sure he got splinters. Doesn't mean, like, he never got hurt. No, like, you can see clearly from his crucifixion that, like, he suffered. So uh, simply, I just wanted to, wanted to give that quick reflection and just help you. I, I don't know. It ultimately depends on God because these encounters, you have to pray for it. And you and God has his own time to do different things. For example, um, yeah, because I'm no longer a seminarian. I'm 
out in the world now. Um, like, for example, my girlfriend, she had her encounter too, which is beautiful to talk about. Um, but God has his precise moments when that, those things happen. And it's it's a matter of realizing that God is a person and he's really there. But in order to keep that alive, you need to do prayer life. You need to spend time with him. And you need to ask yourself throughout the day, like, like talk to him. Like, just like you text a friend throughout the day. You need to also, like, do things that are pleasing. You don't backstab a friend. Uh, you try to live a life of grace. That's what essentially a life of gra- like, living in the state of grace, that's what it is. It's remaining in God's friendship. So... You could actually just staying in the state of grace, like sure, just being a friend. Anybody could be a friend, but you become more of a friend if you actually put effort into it. So that's my invitation to you, and I hope this I hope this reflection helped. Um, count my prayers, and I'll pray for y'all in my rosary. And um, I hope that you guys pray for me too. God bless you. Bye.